Ah, oh, look at back to clickbaiting people again. The best training method in the game. He's obviously trolling. Well, actually, no. Have a look at this. So I'm going to use all these books up. My XP per hour in the top left here. Have a look at it. It's going to ramp up crazy high. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's going to go back down. He's just using a load of lamps at the start of the hour. It makes the XP per hour pretty crazy. There's no way he can consistently hit 250k plus XP per hour. Right? Well, wrong. I've actually found a pattern over in Zaya that makes this training method completely broken and it is always going to be in the game. There's no nerf needed to this or anything like that. Have a look. Here's like five minutes later. My XP per hour has gone down a bit, but I've got a full inventory of books again. How have I got so many of these books so quickly and how can I consistently do this every single hour? I can get 250k plus attack, strength, defense or hit points XP whilst getting loads of either range or mage XP at the exact same time. And you don't even have to spend the full hour doing this method. You only actually have to use about 40 minutes, which means you have 20 minutes spare where you're doing nothing within this hour. You can quest, you can skill, you can level up, you can do whatever you want. And you will still get all of these books and still hit over 200k XP per hour in attack, strength, defense. Provided you're like 90 plus in the skill, if you're a bit lower, you will get slightly lower XP per hour, but it is still by far the best XP per hour in the game. On my pure, I was getting over 120k XP per hour on a low level, low HP account on a pure. It's just completely broken. What I was thinking on the unsmiteable account was I'm going to have to go to the blast furnace, do a load of pumping at 12k XP per hour, 10 times slower, or do a load of pest control, use all the points and maybe get like 20 or 30k, maybe even 40k XP per hour in strength. I'm getting over double the XP per hour I was thinking I was going to get on the pure. And that's just at a low level. It's just so much better than the normal way I thought it was going to train this account. I was thinking this is going to take weeks. You know, I'm going to have to spend over 100 hours here at the blast pump. But instead, the account is making insane progress after just a few days. So let's jump into this method. It's obviously organizing crime on Zaya. You've probably seen it before, but I've found a broken way to do it. I found a pattern on Zaya that's what way these things spawn it's not random it's supposed to be every 30 minutes they all spawn in they appear for five minutes so you can kill a full world and then hop between like maybe three four five worlds depending on how high your dps is and clear a couple of worlds get loads of xp from them worlds and then wait for 25 minutes for the next set to spawn but yeah that's not what i've been doing find a way to just completely hit gangs over and over and over again so i'm going to show you that method in order to do this you need to get 40 percent shays in favor i wouldn't suggest doing full bandages just do bandages up to five percent favor then head over to the lizard man cannon load of them because you really want to get the zaya teleport that their necklace uh, i'll put the next bit on the screen here i can't remember what it's called Xerix Talisman. You want to get yourself a Xerix Talisman because teleporting around Zay is really important. It's not completely essential. It depends what day you actually do this here, Organized Crime. If you do it on a Friday, you don't need this thing. If you do it on a Saturday, you don't really need it. But if you do it on a Sunday through to Thursday through the update, you need as many teleports unlocked on Zaya as you can because the spawns actually change location. And yeah, you want to be able to get around them really, really quick. If you do it on Thursday and Friday, they don't change location. They all spawn in the exact same place, just at slightly different times. I wouldn't even use this method on Thursday because then you don't have as much of a gap. You can only hit a couple of worlds every 30 minutes. But if you do it on a Friday through to the next update date, through to Thursday, with the way these things change, then you just get crazy XP per hour. So don't do it on Thursday. Every other day is good to go. If you don't have a Xerix Talisman, do it on a Friday. But yeah, let's jump into the next bit. So you have hit 40% shays in favour, you're now ready to take on organised crime, but I need to put a wee disclaimer in here. As soon as this video goes live, this method is going to be trash, it's just going to tank really hard. The reason being is you have to compete with all the other players in the game to hit these here gangs, and if loads of people see this video and want to try it, there are going to be loads of people competing to use this method, so it's going to get really really bad for the next week, maybe two weeks. In a month it'll be much better, it'll be back to somewhere about where it is today. In like six months this method's just going to be crazy again, but yeah, just take that into account. If you try this straight away, loads of people will, but it's just going to be really bad. In a few weeks it's going to be class again, so just thought I'd let you know that before I show you it. So you head over into this little place, take a gang note, once you have it it'll tell you when the next one's meeting. It says there's one meeting here. What, where's it say the time? There's a gang meeting over there. What? I thought it'd tell you a time as well. Anyway, you get the little note and then you can actually destroy this one. You only need it once. Then whenever you talk to this here girl, she'll tell you where people are meeting and when they're meeting. And you can hop between worlds and loads of them will be different if you're not on Thursday. They'll say where they're meeting 
when they're meeting, how long it is until that. But what I found here that's not on the wiki that no other content creator has put up is there's actually a massive pattern between worlds. So the wiki gets half of this here kind of pattern. It says that the worlds spawn based on their server. Now servers, there's five of them in RuneScape and it's really hard to tell apart the two American servers. Just be looking at the wee list here, the wee like world hopper thing. It shows the American flag. It doesn't say if it's on the east coast or the west coast so it's quite hard to work them out. They're in two different clusters to begin with but they change as the week goes on. The US and the UK ones are completely different and the Australian one matches one of the servers. It kind of varies. So there's actually four different clusters going on. It's not based entirely on servers and as the week progresses it just gets completely bundled but there is a pattern and as the week goes on less people do this because they don't really know the pattern. I used the cluster and then I like checked all the worlds in the morning time, worked out where everything's going to spawn for the rest of the day. You can just tell because they follow each other. How can I explain this easy so people can understand? It's pretty twisted. So world 3 is where the things are going to spawn in first. If you have a look at the time here it tells you a gang's going to meet up in Port Piscorilius. These ones are going to spawn in 14 minutes. Then World 2, the UK servers, will spawn in a few minutes later. Then after that will be the US servers, World 14, 21, 22. I'm not sure if that's East or West Coast. Let me just have a look here, actually. It might help you out. Yeah, then it's going to be the East Coast will spawn in. Then the West Coast is completely random at different times. I think they have like a 29-minute cycle or something like that because as the week progresses, they get more random. Or not random, really. They just get more varied from the other two servers. So the West Coast ones are not every 30 minutes. But they do all follow the German servers. So I'll make a full guide in this for you guys to make it super easy. It sounds really complicated, but... Basically once you know what's going on you can check the German world and you will know every single other spawn for the next hour pretty much. Once you come back to hand in your intel you ask where the next one's going to spawn and you just know everything follows the German world. You work out the timing of a few worlds in the morning and then you can just consistently hit it. Instead of hitting it once every half an hour you hit just worlds over and over and over again. It gives you crazy XP per hour. I thought I'd just explain it a little bit so you kind of know what's going on in this series and why I'm getting like 10 times more XP per hour than I was planning to be getting, you know. So let's jump in to the progress. So here is my first gang on the account. I head over to the location. You just check where it's going to spawn. Check the wiki to see where that actually is on Zaya. Head in here. I'm using a method that keeps my HP low because I want this account to have low HP. There is one ranger in some of the spawns but here it's just all mage so it's super easy. Kill everybody. Basically what you're looking for is the intel but they also drop a load of planks which would be awesome for Iron Man. They also drop like loads of cosmic runes, loads of compost. But because of this method that I can hit so many of these per hour this would be crazy for Iron Man. They could get like 99 construction banked in a week whilst training with one of the fastest combat training methods in the game which is pretty crazy. They drop mahogany planks, teak planks and oak planks so it's pretty good fast construction XP as well. I marked the intel there so they show up in purple just makes them really easy to spot so don't miss any of them while I'm hopping around. You get always one intel from killing a gang boss but also the wee dudes have like a 1 in 5 chance of dropping an intel so every world you hop to you should be getting over 2 on average which is pretty good. This here is the second gang spawn, the one that has the ranger on it. And the first like attempt, I was just hopping around worlds, didn't really know where the next spawn would be. So I hopped into two or three empty worlds before finding this dude. But once you know what it's at, you know exactly where every single spawn will be and when it's going to be. So that doesn't really happen, you've no wasted time. If there's the range spawn and you're a pure, you want to kill him as fast as possible because he completely wrecks. He can hit like 13s and he's chucking knives so they hit really, really fast as well. So you'll use quite a few food. Now that I've got claws in this account, spoiler for later on this episode, now just claw rush him, kill him as quickly as possible, then it's no problem for the rest of them. Two claw specs, finishes him off and then it can just deal with all the rest of them. If you're 10 HP, just leave a cannon upstairs for a while, it'll kill everybody. There's another intel, I got pretty unlucky in these first two ones, looking at what I've been getting now on the account, you know, but only got two intel from the first two worlds. Right, there is the first set done. I hit up, I think it was just one or two more worlds and I managed to get six of these here intel. So at 62, at, sorry, 63 strength, you get 1.4k for every single one. So that's like 10k XP there in eight minutes. If you work that out, it's about 80k XP per hour at 63 strength. If I was at the rock crabs, the most I'd get would be like 40k. So I'm already getting double XP just starting this. Once I actually learn what I'm at, it goes up way, way higher. But I was just thinking, now I've got a bit of a crazy theory and I'm just going to ramble on about it for about 30 or 40 seconds here. This will be the best trainer method in the game for a defense tank. Now, defense tanks get the worst XP per hour at the minute. They just either sit at monks or sit at the cave bugs kicking them and they get like 1.4k 
to 1.8k XP per hour. That's how slow it is. It's crazy how slow defense tanks are. But have a listen to this for a theory, right? You get a main account, you put on a serpentine helm and a blowpipe, then you have 100% chance of inflicting venom. And venom is neutral damage. That means if somebody else hits a monster that's already venomed, they can still get the kill. Even though it looks like that main's doing all the damage with venom, it doesn't count. The other account will still get the kill. So then you brew down to one range and you put like bronze darts in your blowpipe. Bring the main over and venom all of the gang members and then just kick them deal one or two damage on your defense tank and you could get like 30k xp per hour in a defense tank bit of a crazy ramble but think about that that's like 20 times better than the current way of training a defense tank that's pretty good 20 times better and i've never seen a defense tank doing that so that's pretty cool if anybody wants to make a defense tank there's a really really quick way to do it let's crack on with the progress there is level 56 attack coming in and there's level 57 attack, just three to go. <laughs> Loving these XP drops, they just fly in whenever you're handing in the books. There's level 58, just two more to go. And here it is, level 59 attack on the account. One more level until we unlock the dragon claws. Smashed out a few more and this is the final lot of intel to give us level 60 attack. But before we hand that in, this account is actually missing something. There's one book to go till level 60 attack but we just have to sort something out on the account here so i'll run over trade my main and any claw russian account needs a pair of dragon claws so i'm just going to trade over a set of dragon claws 59.3 mil hopefully you don't lose these because we can't really afford too many pairs of them but there's dragon claws in the account and here is the final intel book to go for level 60 attack there it is massive moment on the account the biggest attack level probably our final attack level on the account i don't think it'll go over 60 even though it will increase my accuracy and i'm actually peaking at level 30 wild so combat doesn't matter too much but we do have to keep the hp down but i think we'll stay at level 60. i've had a thought here and i was going for like 5,000 pest control points but this say training method is just crazy so i'm going to use these 500 points that have like added up and i don't think we'll be back at pest control i'm going to do all the rest of the strength training on zaya so there's level 64 i'm actually going to do a few sets of 10 here to hit 65 because i think you get more depending on how high your strength is so there's level 65 strength and we've got 320 points to go this will get us a few more levels actually 26.9k xp drops pretty massive there so 65 strength in the account 220 to go there's 66 and i think this will give us 67. Oh no, we're a good bit off actually. We'll not get level 67, but still 66 strength on the account and we are heading back over to Zaya. Handing these boys in never gets old. Look at these XP drops, they just completely fly in. That's about five minutes as well to collect all these once I knew what I was at. Have a look at this here. So I collected all these here and then checked the XP per hour. I did set up the thing and restart it before I gathered them. 91k XP per hour at 67 strength. I actually hit 68 strength there, but that's pretty good. Here comes a massive milestone on the account, level 70 strength. Do you know what's funny? I've actually been off for like four hours and I still have higher XP per hour than if I had been sat at the blast pump for that entire time. Even though I had a big massive break, I'm still over 17k XP per hour, which is pretty crazy. There is the Golem quest and Shadow of the Storm completed whilst sitting over 75k XP per hour. Congratulations, you've completed Recipe for Disaster Freeing Evil Day. If you are awarded with one quest point, 7,000 cooking experience, the ability to catch hell rats as well as fight hell rat behemoth for colored spices, ability to own a hellcat and as well as increased access to the colonoro monsters chest in a big there is myth gloves unlocked and have stocked up on these boys for the claw russian big thanks to slayer music for the isle guides mix quest and super easy Here's a full run from start to finish. Now, if you had AOE, if you had like chins or bursts or barge or anything, it'd be much, much quicker than this account. But if you're just slapping them and using a cannon, you can expect to do a full run around this time. Killed everybody. It was not my best run by far, but just gives you an example. There's a full inventory completed in seven and a half minutes. When you pick up the cannon, it fills the last four slots. So that's 12 intel, seven and a half minutes, which is about 21.3k XP. Just crazy the speed this here can get, even on a low HP pure. But yeah, I'll go and hand all these in and that'll be 74 strength. I decided to head out now to the rev caves for the first time in this account. I know it's nowhere near ready. I need to get up past 90 strength, but that actually will only take a couple of days. And I just wanted to come out here and wreck somebody anyway. So around about in this world looking for a target, spotted 
This really low level dude, 73 combat, he's still got like 11 levels on me but claws are pretty strong like I'll probably be able to wreck him. Pond up, hop my looter into this account just because I'm going to be getting out of there as soon as I spec him, you know, don't want to be losing these claws. Put on protect item, that's really important on this account as well. But yeah, here goes the first attempt at killing a boy in this account. Once we have 90 plus strength, we're going to have just really really high success rate but can we get our first kill here didn't even have left click turned on I had to right click on him but there it is super easy most people out here just don't really pay attention especially when you've got such a low level spec in them probably don't expect to get two hit by level 63 but there it is hop on the loot and account pick up all the loot super easy head over and done this here quest ascent of RK. so this just gives me a better teleport to get around Zaya which will make me more efficient when I'm doing the oil organized crime also done what's that other one called Queen of Thieves. Basically, if you do Queen of Thieves and Ascent of Arceus, that covers the northeast side of the island, and then the amulet covers all the rest of the teleport, so you don't really need to do everything. Then we've done Horror from the Deep and got the Zami book. This gives me plus eight crush, which will make my weapon a wee bit more accurate, but it'll make my cannon way more accurate because the cannon goes up your highest stat. My highest stat when I'm doing this stuff is crush, so before it was only like plus 89 crush bonus. Now it's plus 97, so the cannon will be way, way more accurate. There's level 75 strength coming in on the account these things here would actually be really good money i wasn't picking up everything i didn't even pick up any of those cosmic runes and there's over 5,000 of them just picking up the planks there but if you picked up everything it would have been 7.1 mil there's 77 strength coming in the account but i'm going to put these tombs in and that'll be 78 here is the final clip of the video. It's been a bit of an awesome one. We hit level 60 attack, unlocked the claws, discovered one of the best trainer methods in the game. We got 16 strength levels, but when you use this tomb, there is the 17th strength level. Level 80 strength on the account already. In the next video, we're going to try to get up over level 90 strength and do a lot more claw rush. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, though. There's been some pretty cool stuff in it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.